and welcome to Mind and Body Wellness, a TV show where we talk about the health of your mind, body, and spirit, where we interview a variety of guests from the mainstream to the alternative. I'm your host, Clovis Colley, and today in the studio I have with me Trisha Horkin. Trish, not Horkin, and I bet a lot of people make that mistake. She's an intuitive, and thanks for being on. We're going to talk about some cool stuff. Thank readings, you. Uh, intuitive things, and maybe talking to relatives that have passed away. So tell me, what's your, what's your main deal? What's your main gig? Well, people come to me for one of primarily three things, to talk to people who've passed away and that they're really grieving. Once in a while, it'll be curious or the finance romance. <laughs> And I'd have to say it. <laughs> okay. that's, that's making sense so far. Yeah, you know, people come to me for what are we most sometimes unable to be clear about and what do we often have the biggest charge about is relationships. Or, and when I say finance, it's not, it's usually stuff about career, um, especially, you know, I want to make a career change, I don't know what to do, should I go back to school? Um, I'm going to keep my job. There's downsizing. Sure, forks in the road, major exactly. life decisions. Exactly, and a lot of things in between. Now, how does that work? Uh, somebody will ask, hey, should I go get this job or should I go back to school? Or I, They have like a couple of choices to make, and you help them suss that out through uh, intuitive means? Well, that's a good question because if someone says, should I, and this is more, should I stay in my marriage, for example? I'm not going to go there. Unless it's something that your barista at Starbucks would tell you to do. Sure. Should I stay with my husband who, you know, beats me up and is selling drugs out of the house? You know, I mean, I, right. I don't want that. So, but what often I'll do is help people get on, clear on the questions that they want to ask. I put responsibility into people, what do you want to ask? Because okay. so, and that helps people to get well, clear I mean, as well. Absolutely, asking yeah. the right questions is the, the best place to start. Exactly, and that's a lot of I'm sure what you do when you help people get clear on what their goal is with hypnosis. Sure, sure, exactly. very well formulated yeah. outcomes, and that can change everything. Exactly, and then what I will do is I love what you said. If people have a couple of options, and I will be able to often tell them what I see as the probable result. And of, uh, well, this, I don't have a good feeling about. This feels like there is some holdups with administration. That's why you haven't heard back on this interview. Or sometimes people will be afraid that they're going to lose their job. And I don't want, you know, and I will credit it with, you know, you have to trust yourself, et cetera, et cetera. But when people go into fear, it's harder to be clear. Oh, absolutely. Sure. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So now is this, uh, you're feeling the future out a little bit, uh, maybe f uh, for your clients. Exactly. And you, uh, when, has there just been a time, or give me an example of, of maybe s some time when you, you helped them make the right choice and it was just became so clear later on, it was just the right thing to do. Great. Have you had that happen? I have, interestingly enough, I don't get feedback from people as much as you'd think. People don't always, um, you know, they have one reading with me or two readings with me, and I don't always hear what happens after the fact, cause, but sometimes I'll be out to eat and someone will come up to me and they'll say, you told me that I would get a lateral promotion and I didn't understand what the heck you were talking about and that's exactly what happened. Um, probably one of the more big results that I remember. And this is that I got the feedback about because it was someone who, he and his family came to me regularly enough that I would get feedback over the years. He was working for a large corporation that was in the process of downsizing dramatically. And I kept getting that he would keep getting promotions and he thought I was out of my mind because 50% of the people he were working with were getting downsized. And he So he automatically assumed he was going to be part of that group. Well, as he should. It was logical. He got three promotions. 
Every time really? they let go of people, <laughs> that he kept, he, you know, they kept consolidating groups and he kept getting promotions. He got three. Interesting. And he told me, I thought you were crazy. Now, let's go to the flip side. Is there any time that you got some real bad news for somebody that you got to... That's the best question. First off, I don't want to see something horrifying that I can't change. So... What do you? For family and good friends, of which most of your family doesn't listen to you anyway, so about anything, so it's not <laughs> any different. So this, so I don't want to say, I want to block myself, right? Secondly, if I'm going to predict something that, let's say I did get a really bad feeling for someone, and I said it and I was wrong, that would be inconsciousable, it would be absolutely unethical, and I could scare the heck out of oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So, but what happened was, when I say for my really close friends and family, A, I'm plugged into them all the time. Secondly, I automatically have their permission to tell them what I'm getting. I feel that it's very often manipulative when people with intuitive gifts go up and they give spontaneous readings and I want to tell you what I'm getting. You have to see what your motive is with that. Right, right. So what happened was I was living overseas and one of my best friends from when we were freshman in high school was pregnant. And I just kept worrying about her. I kept worrying about her. Well, she knows who I am, so if I called her and left her a message and said, I'm really worried about you and your pregnancy, and I couldn't see what it was. I couldn't see what it was. And, and you know, we all know what the worst case scenario would be if you're mm, worried about. Right, right. So I, I would just leave her messages because with the time difference, it was hard to catch her live. And I would just say, take good care of yourself. Finally, I catch her live and I say, how are you? I keep thinking about you and I'm kind of worried about you. And she said, oh gosh, don't be worried. I'm going to get induced tomorrow. And I said, okay. Well, she almost died in childbirth. Oh no. But what she said was that she found this odd sense of peace because I had said something to her. There was a tiny part of her that wasn't caught off guard okay. when she was being So at rational. some level she knew. No, she said because, I'm not saying that's not true. What she was saying was because we talked and I had told her I was concerned about her, she felt that someone knew in advance that she was in trouble. Okay. And, oh, I, and this is a part I forgot. I said, tell me what time you're getting induced and I'll pray for you. Okay. So, and that's what I did. We did, I figured out the time change. I was seven hours ahead. But she said it helped her because Good. she wasn't quite as shocked. When things started going. Exactly. So she had a little bit of mental prep for it. And that's okay. the way she felt. So gotcha. it's, what's the purpose of a premonition? The purpose of a premonition is for prevention or preparation, right, right. right? But uh, going back to my question, if you have a client that comes in for a reading and you know their airplane's gonna, it's always an airplane crash. Because right? <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know tomorrow their airplane's <laughs> gonna crash. You don't say, do not fly. Uh, do I don't want to see it to begin with. Well, of course you don't want to be. No, no, I literally, I literally almost quit because I got totally <laughs> traumatized and I had to a, make an agreement that I didn't have to tell people everything I see, and B, I had to start working with my filters that I only could see what they were asking about. Okay. And anyone who asks about that, when am I going to die, blah, 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 you know, they're just being smart, Alex. Do you know? Right, right. Does anyone really want to know? I mean, I've, but people close to me, I've seen things that they didn't listen to, and then, you know, they might freak out. Well, you know, I... You know, if you knew that it was going to be like two years from now, you could run up your credit cards and... <laughs> You know, yeah, it could it could be handy. <laughs> no, we would never. Do that. That's just a joke. Um, so Go buy that Cadillac. Yes, yeah, you might as well enjoy yourself for the next two years. Yeah, get life insurance on, uh, on the payment so your family doesn't have to pay it off. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So we can use this to set up a little financial chicanery, knowing when we're on our way out, but. Uh, so what, uh, what other good things, why are we doing this, okay? Why do people want this done, and maybe why should they want it done? Oh, that's a great question. It's fun. Well, yeah. It's it fun. It's a blast. It's a lot of fun. And, um, okay, so we're talking about people who are grieving, right? Okay. Uh, 
If there's someone who actually can do it, oh, that, that means so much. The can reach talk out to and people, get a people, Yes. And I've been just as much on the receiving end of a qualified, what they call medium. Medium is the, the old word in English for someone who can receive messages from, from people who've passed on. Okay. And medium as in you're going to paint a picture on a certain type of medium. I guess. Yeah, right. exactly. It's, got, it's called mediumship okay. is the skill if you're talking to people who've passed away. A medium is a person that's doing it. Okay. So, and that is something that, that's why I'm very, very careful that someone has to ask me and have permission because people could really manipulate people with that. And it's, a, that's a situation where I feel like it's a tremendous amount of help to people, especially if it's a tragic situation. A lot of the people that come to me, you're dealing with people who are murdered, suicides, or children. Yes, and well, when you, when you would talk to maybe a child that passed away, and any time a child passes away, it seems pr very premature. And yeah. I, I went to a little kid's funeral once, and I never, ever want to go again. I mean, it's just the most, it's the, it's it's the, the worst. most heartbreaking thing I could ever imagine is, you know, going, in, uh, uh, going to a child's funeral. It's, it's unbearable. Um, but what kind of, if you could get a good message from that, could, do you have an example? of? Yeah, my ex-husband's daughter passed away. I did a reading for her. And I had known him. We were traveling overseas. I met him when I was traveling in India. And we had spent time together. And he didn't say anything because his daughter had just passed a couple weeks before. He didn't know what to do with himself, so he went to India. So, and he didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want people's looks of pity. He was still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I went to him and I said, I keep seeing this. Uh, he didn't speak English really. And I only, he spoke Italian. And I knew all I could say was, I, I start seeing this little girl around and I say, I see this angel around me. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point I may, I, I had heard that he had had a child pass away, but then she started coming to me constantly. And I went up to him, and then he told me that his, how his daughter had passed away. And then he asked if we could talk to her, and we did. And she said, I want you to move with your dog to Italy and be with my father. And, yeah. I, said, and I said, that's really sweet. She must like me. <laughs> and, he, and she said a lot about, um, she explained a lot about why she died. And that was in alignment with his spiritual belief system. Did and it make sense? To him, it did. Okay. It did. And it wasn't anything all that new. It was just maybe a little bit more detailed. So it wasn't nothing deep or earth? It was for him. F for him specifically. Sure, sure. If, like in his paradigm, it was very much the karma behind it. Okay. People very mis misuse karma, but it was, um, and she was, do you know that she had just reached a state of bliss? And she said and she described herself enough without me seeing a photo of her that he could get credibility that she was really there okay so i could describe what she looked at i mean we we're in the middle of the foothills of the himalayas it wasn't like he could this was before cell phones with pictures and all that i didn't have a photo of her okay. so that was some of it was just to build credibility so, so mm -hmm. yes yeah and so i said oh she's saying that i said she must like me and he goes actually she would have he told me that she would have and he explained why he thought we would get along and uh, six months later, I moved with my dog over to Italy to be with them. Okay. And she said you and the dog. Yeah. She, huh? My dog. Yeah, my dog. Okay. But I just thought, you know, she's being sweet, you know. Sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll have that. Right, right. What, you know, this is one of the hardest questions in life, why, why a child would die. But he didn't ask that. He didn't ask that of me. Did, have you got an answer to no. that in any, any kind of general sense? I feel that something like, I have my own belief system with it, however, I feel that is God's territory. And whatever someone has to believe to be able to get up and get out of bed in the morning right. is what, so, but I've never had a parent ask me that. I've never had them ask me that, well, me that's that. A, that's strange that they wouldn't go, why? Well, you have to think about by the time that they come to me, they've been mulling around for a while. 
Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And right. no, there's not any answer that's going to satisfy him anyway. No. no <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. So uh, for someone with um, maybe more of a, a certain Christian background, they may believe that God took them to heaven because they were so good. They had completed their, you know, mission on earth, et cetera. For someone else, they would say it was their karma. They had completed it. Mm -hmm. But not in the karma that we see misused here that, you know, goes around, comes around, and, you know, karma's going to get you. But literally before they were born, they had decided that they were not going to have a long lifespan. Right. So, you know, that kind of a thing. Absolutely. Yeah. What's, uh, what's one of the coolest things that you found out for somebody uh, doing a, a reading from a relative? Uh, well, it makes me excited to die because it sounds like a blast. Okay. <laughs> well, depending on the... <laughs> no, no, for real. I've never, ever talked to anyone who's passed away that wasn't in a good place. But they're not going to come to me. I also don't... So, when you ask what's the coolest thing, do you mean that someone who's told me who's already passed away or that I've been able to say to someone else? Yeah, maybe some relief that you've given somebody or a good message and the, the person goes... Oh, God, I feel so much better now. Oh, that I know absolutely. That. Um, is that a frequent thing? It's, yes, it is. Okay. Um, knowing that they're at peace, which they aren't always. They're not always at okay. peace. Um, they could I, be like Ebenezer Scrooge and <laughs> have the chains and <laughs> go around making people have bad <laughs> dreams, you know. <laughs> Getting hold of Ouija boards. Sure. Well, uh, I personally think Ouija boards are kind of on the dangerous side, and I don't amen. recommend having one in your house. And amen. If you listen to uh, the amen. Coast to Coast radio show, the, you know, they interview people about these yeah. Ouija boards, and they're like, Ouija boards are always a precursor to having your house haunted by <laughs> something or other. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like, you know, just open the gate for whatever to come through. open the gates of hell. Yeah. <laughs> bedroom closet so. <laughs> <laughs> so um okay so we think back to the question or sometimes let's say someone overdoses on a narcotics and so they're wasted and then they overdose okay do they, they stay wasted in the afterlife what it is is that when lost? they die they may think they're just still wasted and they're on a heavy trip Okay. So they have to be convinced. Also, alcoholic deaths will be that. They have to be convinced very often that they're, they've indeed passed away. Um, so that gives them relief. The other thing is when just knowing they're around. And for example, I have when I'm deal, talking to uh, you really widows. Widows are very common. If I have a young widow who's 25, her husband's around all the time. And he'll say things like, and I'll say, what's up with the light going down in the basement? It keeps flickering. He's afraid someone's going to fall down the stairs and crack their head open. I mean, they're that much around watching out the house. Or it may be someone who is in their 80s. So it's not so much that the person who's 80s or 90s will come to me, but their daughter. And, I'll see, and their father's passed away, and they're worried about their mother. And I'll say, they're, they're, your father's around all the time. I'll say that. Now, some people come to me and they say, so they're around me all the time, and I'll say no. Now, uh, have you been able to move this over? You know, we keep finding out some of these things, and now what you're doing might really upset some people, and that's no news to you. Well, I and, don't understand who and would And some people may really be in love with the idea of what you're doing. And, uh, you know, just like me doing hypnosis, some people just get really ginky about it and just go crazy. <laughs> And, you know, uh, some people just go, oh, yeah, that's what you use to quit smoking cigarettes, and I'm going to go do that. Sure, sure. Then some, think, some people think it's just the weirdest thing in the world. Normalizing. And, you know, I, there's science behind it now, and we do brain mapping, and, and we can see what's going on in the brain while people go into the state that they pass through on their way to sleep and on their way back out of sleep, and why you can change the mind about things so easily in that state. Is there a way that you've, you've you know, and, and then the transference of thoughts. We, now we know we have mirror neurons. You have a set of neurons that respond to mine, and I have a set of neurons that respond to yours. Or that energy it's never not dies. magic. Yeah, and energy never um, dies. And we know that energy never dies. Exactly. And we're starting to find out some, you know, some of what we thought was bizarre and strange is actually pretty scientific. Have you been able to make that leap with some of the things that you've 
that you've done? Or? Okay, so the best piece of advice that was given to me was a friend of mine who's a physicist and also incredibly metaphysical said, don't try to explain what you do in scientific s terms to a non-believer who's scientific because you'll it'll never work. Mm -hmm. That being said, I will come across, uh, you know, the curly in photography that sure. could. So what they did was they would take a a tree, mm -hmm. they would do a photograph of it, and it would show the energy around the living tree. Right. They would pluck a leaf off of it, and the energy would still be or there. Or cut the leaf in half, and they exactly. The or the, what's going on with water when you put a thought form into water, such as, yes. you know, that. However, it's... And, and what you're talking about is that the, the water actually under a microscope responds to thought. Exactly. And now we know we're finding out we can store information in water. I didn't and, know that. That's fascinating. Yes, like microchips. This is unbelievable stuff. We don't even know how water works. I <laughs> know. We don't know how cotton works either. <laughs> Still use that. <laughs> Well, and this is actually, however, a very Midwestern, and I, I can't speak for the South or the Southeast, it's a, or Western European limitation where people feel like they have to explain it. We, Albert Einstein said, well, it's paraphrased, that the most valuable thing is intuition. Why, well, absolutely. But, but Albert Einstein said that. Right. So I'll have people say, well, I don't really believe in what you do, which I said, that's cool. It's not for everybody. Right. I'm not out here to convince anybody of anything. I'm not here to proselytize. But then they'll say, you see, because I'm a scientist. And I'm, and I'm like, well, you know, kind of your, one of your legends. So, right. That's, you know, so yeah. that's a distinction that was made a long time ago that doesn't even really make sense anymore. But, you know, people say that to me. They'll go, I don't believe in hypnosis. And I'm like, so what? I know, did I ask you to be? Yeah, well, it doesn't matter <laughs> because you're in it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what a difference Being stuck in that thought, <laughs> being stuck in that thought is hypnosis. <laughs> Somebody hypnotized you not to believe in hypnosis. Well and, said, well and, said. And, and to be, I, I have to tell you that I just don't attract people that are disrespectful or I don't I just don't attract that I don't attract a lot maybe there are people maybe people are afraid to say something to my face oh. <laughs> or right. I don't have I don't really have so people like that you, you're very comfortable with what you're doing yeah it and takes a long time I've been doing it professionally for 20 years as you should be yeah uh, did you feel a little funny about it when it first started coming or you heck first started yes hiring? heck yes and you know I wasn't all freaked out in the sense that you hear stories about people they get in a car accident and they're in a coma for a while and they come out and they can do all this what was that movie that he got trained into a TV stove with Christopher Walken it was oh. you, do you know what I'm talking about where like he ended up in a coma and then he woke up and he could touch people's hands well, and I think that happened about five times yeah. five different movies <laughs> exactly exactly and well John Travolta was in one right frequency no but that ended up being yeah. <laughs> exactly well frequency he could do all these amazing things and it turned out he had a brain tumor but for me, it was gradual. I, rem you know, there were things when I was a child. There was things when I was a teenager, and then when I started to explore it on purpose, and things things escalated. When things really escalated. So you had a nice little bit of gradual transition. It, what and, freaked and me out was feeling really lonely. Was feeling really lonely. So you got a sense from somebody that made you. That no, I felt like who can I talk to about this? Okay. Because like I told you, you know. You didn't have many peers. When I first started to do it, there wasn't books by Sylvia Brown. She didn't have a TV show, James von Prague, John Edwards. I didn't even have a name for what I was doing And you were just all. out on, on your own with this. Exactly. And when we were visiting before the show, I didn't advertise myself. People just started coming to me because they heard. Okay. I didn't even know what to call myself because I didn't know there was a name for it. Yeah. Well, sometimes that can be limiting anyway, but, you know, we yeah. have this thing you know, military remote viewing. The Russians yes, started it, and yes, then we did it, yes. and now we don't want to talk about it. Yes. There's a group of military guys yes. that were, that, what did they find? They found a plane that got lost, and they did all these different things 
Well, over and over and over. And I actually had a client that told me all about that before those books came out by that gentleman that was actually, I don't know how he was given clearance to write it that he wouldn't have gotten. Maybe it was like the, the group there's that a, disbanded. A of guys that were in projects Sunstreak or Starstreak. But they, there was something where he, he was legally able to talk about it, and I don't know if they disbanded it. But, uh, right, I think yeah. some of it's been yeah, and I had a Yeah, and I, have a, I had a client who was a special forces who did not think I was odd at all what I did because he started telling me about all that was going on. Right. Can right. you imagine how traumatizing that would be? Well, I, I forget. what It wasn't Stubblebine. It was somebody else. He got shot in the head. He was wearing a helmet, but you don't want to get shot in the head even wearing a helmet. So I and then he was psychic immediately uh, afterwards. Yes, and that's what I was, and is I didn't so have that you trauma. Didn't get, uh, you didn't get thrown in the pool. Uh, no. You didn't get pushed right into the no. deep end of the pool. You had a little bit of a gradual, uh, gradual um, Development, sure. Those things, but so. emotional trauma was what got me. My own grief, my own devastation with death was what got me to open up completely. I see. Were yeah. you able to help heal that for yourself? Well, what happened was I had had experiences with it. And then when I was in my 20s, my father passed away from cancer and it broke my heart. I was okay. absolutely out of my mind with grief. But at that point, I knew about thought is created. I knew about unlimited thinking. I knew about what we now call the law of attraction. Sure, so I said, sure. all right, if everything's possible, I want to be able to talk to my father. Sure, and, and you were. No, I wasn't able to talk to him, but everybody else started coming to me. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you got the short end of the stick. It's <laughs> one or one minute. Tell me in 20 seconds how people can get a hold of you if they would like uh, to talk about this? What um, they can contact my me through my website, which is Trishna Vision, T R I S H N A dot com. And Trishna I also. Trishna Vision. Okay. You know, get it? Trishna Vision dot com. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, or they can reach me through, I have a Facebook page, Trishna Vision. Okay. And my email is Trishna, T R I S H N A 1008 at hotmail.com. Nice. Uh, time's, time's flown by. We'll have to do this again because I'm sure people are going to love this. I hope they're so. Get, they're going to want to hear more about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Mind and Body Wellness. This has been brought to you by Nebraska Counseling and Hypnosis Center. Check us out on Facebook or uh, at ncandhc.com, and we'll see you again.